As Greece's new government takes shape, its leaders still hope to renegotiate the EU bailout deal to soften its impact on the country. But can the coalition agree on the terms? And are Greece's creditors ready to help? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. It's good to have you here with us. I'm Divya Gopalan. Now, the winner of Sunday's elections in Greece, the centre-right New Democracy Party, is holding discussions in an attempt to form a pro-euro government. Its first priority would be the bailout agreement reached with the EU and the International Monetary Fund, which all Greek political parties want to renegotiate in some form. However, any amendment to the terms of Greece's bailout will need the backing from Germany. From Berlin, Nick Spicer reports. It's hard to imagine Angela Merkel not feeling relief. The German Chancellor called to congratulate Antonis Samaras, the man expected to form the next Greek government. And Germany's foreign minister suggested there might be a little extra time to implement the austerity reforms, but nothing else. The result of the Greece elections is that um, there are no concessions uh, because what has been agreed um, is now what we will implement. The Greek press has grown tired of Germany's pushing for austerity. And over the months, the feeling of fatigue has grown mutual. This leading news magazine recently wrote Acropolis adieu, basically goodbye to the Greeks. And polls suggest two-thirds of Germans are ready to say just that if Athens won't abide by its commitments. But if the EU and Germany decide to give Greece a little more time, that could create a situation where it's not entirely smooth sailing in other ailing economies of the Eurozone. Once the EU starts making major compromises on Greece, uh, the Portuguese and the Irish will ask, so why not us too, you know, and that will create a real serious problem for the EU as a whole. The Greek economy is only 2% of the European Union's GDP. A relatively tiny problem, it would seem, and now perhaps getting a brief reprieve, but the Eurozone's problems by any measure remain enormous. Nick Spicer, Al Jazeera, Berlin. So, would the new Greek Prime Minister be able to impose new terms to the bailout deal? And how? To answer these questions and more, we're joined by our guests. In Athens, Dimitrios Tsomokos. He's an advisor to the President of Greece and the New Democracy Party and Economics Fellow at Oxford University. Also in Athens, George Tsatakis, Member of Parliament for the Opposition Party, Syriza. And in Brussels, Yorgo Chatsimarkakis. He's a member or a German member of the European Parliament for the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe. Now, I'm going to start with Mr. Dimitrios Somokos. And your prime minister came to power on the back of a campaign to they, saying that they are going to try and pare down the austerity measures, try and renegotiate the terms of the current deal. What kind of renegotiation are you looking for? Good afternoon. First, the Greek electorate voted in a loud and clear way to stay in the European trajectory and to remain in the Eurozone. The main plan and the main wish of uh, the new government will be to renegotiate the memorandum between the Troika and the Hellenic Republic and to supplement the memorandum with more growth measures. Nowadays, particularly after the Spanish financial crisis erupted, there is a consensus, a growing consensus in Europe that we have to emphasize growth more rather than austerity. How can this be achieved? This can be achieved by extending the time horizon of implementation of the 11 billion uh, euros uh, measures. Moreover, we have to rectify some of the social injustices that the first memorandum imposed upon the Greek society, namely uh, the decimation of low pension, uh, low pensions, the uh, reconstitution 
of unemployment benefits and extension of unemployment benefits and subsidies to multi-member families. Moreover, we have to emphasize that the Greek government, the new Greek government, will be committed to honor all of the contractual obligations and to honor all of the signatures that the previous governments have signed. Having said that, we would also like to emphasize that we want to expedite structural reforms. We want uh, to liberalize uh, various closed professions and we want to put our emphasis that the liquidity, that the new recapitalized banks will go to the real economy. And as far as the supply side of the economy, we would like lower taxes because that's very important because a lower and a simpler tax system will jumpstart the economy, will take the Greek economy out of the recession trap, increase the GMP and thereby increase the tax revenues for the state coffers. So this is a comprehensive plan that wants to abide by the targets and the objectives of the loan agreement, namely the deficit has to be reduced, the debt to GNP ratio has to be reduced, however we would like to modify the policy mix and supplement uh, austerity measures with more growth measures. And mm -hmm. of course this will do, will do it and materialize it with the mutual agreement and the consensus from the European Union. We would like okay. to view our all right, speaking of the European Union, let's go to the European Union. Let's go to the Yorgo Chatsimakakis, who's a member of the European Parliament. Now, um, as Mr. Somokos outlined some, some of the things that uh, the Greek Parliament wants to implement, and among those was uh, a cut or a renegotiation of those austerity measures, including a cut in taxes to stop cuts in pensions and salaries, uh, and a few other things. Are, are these re realistic? Uh, first of all, we have to acknowledge that uh, the memorandum of understanding, how it was designed, uh, firstly, did not work out. Uh, now, due to the elections, there has been a, a long delay. Uh, but then, after Spain has also slipped under the rescue scheme of the European Union, Spain has been given different conditions, and that changes the scenery. I think it is very, very difficult to use the term renegotiation, because this implies that the renegotiation has to pass 16 parliaments because it has to be ratified. I would rather suggest to talk about adjustments, because if you give Spain another time frame to pay back their bailout, uh, you can't treat Greece in, a, in another manner. So that means that we should adjust, have a readjustment of the measures, especially concerning the time frame. And uh, uh, looking at to Berlin, uh, we have heard yesterday by the foreign minister that this might be feasible. All the sources here in Brussels tell us that it will be feasible to readjust the time frame, but I would restrict it to the term readjustment um, and not renegoti renegotiation, because then all the other member states will really, really get upset because it's very difficult to pass that through the parliaments by ratification. Okay, I want to talk about this readjustment. But before I do that, I want to bring Mr. George Tatakis in. He's with the Syriza party who came. Their platform was not being part of this austerity measure, was of pulling out of the EU. Do you think that Greece will survive under the austerity measures, under these, even if there is a re readjustment of the, of the implementation of what they've asked for? Uh, what I have to say is that if the readjustment is really of some significance, then some people, might, then some things might work. If the readjustment is just on some uh, minor terms of the agreement, uh, I'm afraid that the Greek program has not worked during the last couple of years, and I'm afraid it will not work in the next couple of years. The Greek economy cannot take any more austerity and uh, the coalition government just formed more or less will fail if it does not pursue a real readjustment of the program. Mr. Tsamokos, um, I'd like to get your view on what Mr. Chatsi Makakis said, had said, um, saying that there is going to be a readjustment and mainly on the time frame. Is that realistic? Is that acceptable for your government? Yes, I would like first of all, not to enter a legalistic, uh, with respect to terminology, the substance is to modify, to alter in a mutually acceptable way the policy mix so that 
to uh, get out of the crisis as expeditiously as possible and to supplement the already agreed uh, policy mix with growth measures. And I tend uh, and I firmly believe and I would like to be more optimistic uh, than my distinguished uh, colleague Mr. Stathakis as to the chances and the opportunities for the Greek economy to get out of the crisis. We believe that with political commitment, creativity, responsibility and the European solidarity, the Greek economy as well as the other southern European countries will resolve their sovereign debt crisis and the entire European Union, the Eurozone in particular, will still remain into its on its track and uh, prosperity and growth. Okay, I want to remind our viewers on what were the bailout terms. Now, the latest austerity package was the condition for a $170 billion bailout. It includes 150,000 jobs slashed from the state sector by 2015, of which 15,000 should be cut by the end of this year. Lowering the minimum wage by 20% from $978 a month to $781. Pension cuts were $390 million this year, liberalization of the labor laws, and privatization worth $19.5 billion by 2015, including Greek gas companies. So we've now outlined what the EU would like. Mr. Chatsimakakis, tell me, do you think it is realistic asking Greece to do this? If you look at their economy, they're going into a fifth year of recession. Unemployment is one of the highest in the Eurozone. Is it really, are you, can they pay back their debt with these austerity measures if their economy is already suffering? Well, let me take Germany as an example. Germany, after the Second World War, had less debts than Greece now. And uh, in the London Conference of 1953, Germany was given an enormous haircut and they paid their last dose of payback only in 2010. So they had a very, very long, if you want, time frame. And I think representing Germany in the European Parliament, uh, I would ask now the Germans, my co-fellow Germans, to respect the Greek situation in the same manner like the Germans were respected after the Second World War. That means that this uh, initial bailout, this initial memorandum of understanding was not feasible. It was very theoretical and did not match with the Greek situation. And that is where we are now. We have to rethink it. We need to accept the basic terms, and I think all the Greek parties do it. Uh, but we have to understand that it's not feasible within the very tight time frame. That means, I agree with Mr. Tsomokos, who said we have to add to any um, measure, uh, austerity measure, uh, we have to add the growth impact. That is feasible even without a legalistic debate. That is feasible in, in, by just doing it. But we can't do it in the time given by this bailout, uh, by this memorandum of understanding. That's what we're going to have to change immediately. OK, I'm going to turn this on its head. George Tatakis, first, I want to ask you, given the results of the election, which have shown that the population does want to stay within the euro, does your Syriza party change its stance? And are you more likely to accept austerity measures? Well, we are not going to accept austerity measures. What we have argued all along is change the bailout deal. Remain in the euro is our, own, is our own strategy, but the bailout deal does not work. It cannot work. The recession is minus 15. If we apply more austerity, it will be minus 25 percent of GDP. That's the greatest recession ever since 1929. No European economy can bear such a burden. But here are the facts. You know, Greece was living beyond its means well before, well before the EU came in. And then once it came in, public sector wages rose for about, by about 50% between 1999 and 2007. It was the highest in any area of the Eurozone. Um, there were many more examples. Many people didn't pay tax. Is it really fair to say that they, you don't want to stand within the conditions that are given to you for money that you are getting? Well, we accept the readjustment process. If wages were very high, we could accept and discuss a 20% decline. But when you come up with an idea of a decline of 60%, then the, the statement that the Greeks were living beyond their means is an overstatement. The Greek economy had a huge growth 
uh, between 95 and 2008. Public debt was 120 percent before 95 and after 2009. So it's a wrong idea. What we really need is a sound policy that will put the Greek economy back into the growth uh, track by readjusting a proper readjustment and a sensible readjustment. It didn't happen. It will not happen with austerity measures again. Mr. Tsamakos, you know, it's, it's known this is going to be a long and painful process for the Greek people. There are going to have to be certain austerity measures. People are going to have to cut back even more and the government is going to have to trim down. If, and, and you, your colleague and Syriza there uh, was saying that there are certain things that won't be acceptable. If the people of Greece stand up and say we can't take much more of this, what is your government going to do? Well, the democratic process uh, on Sunday the 17th determined and gave a loud and clear mandate that Greeks want to stay in the Eurozone, they want to modernize the economy and they voted massively for the pro-European political forces. That means the economic policy has to be more creative, more modern and less centrally planned and we have to build an intelligent relationship of an efficient, simple and well-functioning state rather than a paternalistic of taxing and spending. And we want to create a model whereby the Greek economy will exploit and the Greek society will exploit and utilize the core competences of the Greek economy, namely shipping, tourism, agriculture, commerce and above all the human capital of the Greek population. And this cannot happen using the recipes of the 60s and the 70s. And as the distinguished member of the German parliament, Mr. Hedzimarkakis, mentioned, with mutually agreed and with consensus measures, I think this is achieve achievable because at the end of the day, we are all together in the same ship. Both the Germans, the French, the Greeks, the Spanish, both the North and the South. Mr. Chatsimakakis, uh, as we heard there, there is a willingness to cut back, but in essence, there is an issue at hand. Greek, Greek has a very high unemployment rate. Um, there is, there is going to be difficulty in trying to pay back even a fraction of this debt over, over the time period, even if you do extend that time period. And now there's talk within Germany itself saying that there could be some more, uh, some more concessions. What kind of concessions can you see happening that will also apply, as you said, to the neighbors, Spain, Portugal, Italy? Uh, we have to use the money at hand uh, for instance, the European regional fund money and cohesion fund money in a much better way. At the moment, uh, at the accounts of the European Union, there are some 13, 1, 3 billion euro that uh, should go to Greece but can't get to Greece because of some awkward mechanisms in the, in the Greek architecture, but also because some, I would say, uh, shortcomings in the European institutions because we have created an EU task force for Greece, but uh, in the last uh, 14 months, they haven't really achieved to change this mechanism. This would be a first instance injection. These 13 billion of euros that should come to Greek projects, infrastructure, renewable energy, tourism, health tourism, and so on and so forth. I, uh, I agree with Mr. Tsumokos with the, the uh, areas of the Greek economy that could be fueled by this money. But I have to admit that nor the Greek administration, but also nor the European administration achieved in these 14, 15 months uh, to absorb this money into the Greek economy. What we also would have to do with this money is to create a Greek investment bank. Uh, the small and medium enterprises in Greek don't have access to money at the moment. In the private sector, we might see a lot of creation of new jobs. If there would be some money in the sector, we need this bank. And I think the European uh, in Investment Bank could help with uh, expertise, with knowledge, uh, and to combine this knowledge with the money that we have at hand. It's just a question of doing it, and we are just talking too much about it instead of doing. Okay. Now, if we want to take it back to the people on the streets of Greece, uh, George, Mr. George Stathakis, 
do you think people in Greece will accept these measures? Everyone is trying to renegotiate or reevaluate, but essentially it's the people of Greece that will be suffering or will be paying the price for this. Do you think they have the tolerance for this? If the new government does not come with any real concessions that uh, will provide some hope to the people, I think that it, was, it will be very hard for this government to survive and uh, the people to provide uh, a kind of support that this new government really needs. So I think either we'll have a drastic change in the Greek plan or, or the Greek tolerance more or less of the people that under such stress uh, will come out uh, in anger again. Okay, Mr. Samokas, then in that case, you know, uh, what kind of a balancing act is your government facing trying to make the European Union and the people on the streets happy? How, how is your government expected to work this out? Well, nowadays, the Greek people have realized that the Greek economy, regardless of the memorandum and the loan agreement, should move forward should adopt a more modern view about how to organize its transaction and economic affairs. Namely, we should enhance the working and the well-functioning of the market. We should remove all of the inefficiencies and the oligopolistic structures, both in the labor market and the product market. And we should give all the investment incentives with a good, new, fast and efficient investment law so that to attract domestic and foreign investments. The old model of tax and spend, consume and borrow, is for the most part, particularly after the international financial crisis, dead. And we want to get back on our feet by producing, by consuming what we produce, and by consolidating our fiscal affairs. And this inevitably will increase the GNP, will increase the pie, and therefore the welfare state will be reconstituted, welfare payments uh, will be uh, funded by the receipts from the tax revenues and growth will be sustainable and will be based on solid footing rather than on glass and uh, clay feet. Mr. Chatsimakakis, why, why put all these measures and constraints on Greece? Why not give them a deal like uh, you gave Spain without conditions? Um, there, there are, of, of course, conditions given uh, to Greece. Uh, but uh, it seems that Greece uh, in the last 30, 40 years um, has continued to build up a clientelistic uh, state. Uh, and the state, unfortunately, has been hampering uh, the flourishment, the flourishing of the private economy. That is something we can see now. Uh, it took us some time in Europe to understand all this. Um, but now the time has come to reform it. And I, I am ha very happy that Mr. Tsomokos speaking for the new Greek government, uh, wants to tackle all this, it's high time to do so. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced, like he said, that the human capital in Greece that couldn't flourish so far is so high that we might see a very immediate action plan and a very immediate remedy of the Greek, uh, uh, of the Greek economy. I'm, I'm very happy because it's high time. And Mr. Stotakis, finally, I'll, I'll pass it on to you here. Um, your party is now the opposition. What kind of support are you going to give the Greek, current Greek government or are you going to still stand, f stand firm on the fact that Greece should not be facing austerity measures? Well, we will uh, support the government for any, better, for any improvement in the existing deal. We will oppose much of, of these uh, liberal reforms which uh, are the wrong footing for the Greek economy. The Greek economy needs state administration reform, but the new democracy has failed to do that in the last 20 years. I wonder why they will succeed now. And B, I think that uh, the Greek economy has gone uh, during the liberalization era back in the 1990s. It has a very small state business control sector, the smallest in Europe. So what really the Greek economy needs is a kind of social uh, reforms, reforms in state administration, reforms, economic re reforms, but of uh, a more regula regulative style in order to be able to make the economy function properly. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, it was all very good to speak to you. What's become clear is that Greece has a long and painful road ahead.
I'd like to thank all of my guests in Athens, Dimitrios Samokos, also in Athens, George thank Tatakis, and in Brussels, you. Yorgo Chatsimarkakis. Thank you very much, the viewers, for joining us on thank this you. edition of Inside thank Stories. If you want to send us your feedback, just email your thoughts to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye for now.